What up guys, Victor here. And as you can see, Brooke and I are walking the beach. Say what's up. Hi. Um, we just netted some bait at a different beach. We took him to this beach right here because it's a little bit um, deeper. There's a, bi a bigger trough than where we just were. And so what we're doing is I got a bucket here full of pilchards. Brooke is walking. I'm gonna show you guys how I netted all the bait. I'm gonna let that clip roll now and then we're gonna get on some snook. Got a little whiting, a little whiting right there, that guy, and then this guy right here is a glass nose. Kind of looks like a catfish and I'll show you guys later. They literally have a nose that looks like a glass. It looks like a little glass tumor. It's a, uh, no way, look, it's a baby permit. Wow. That's, a, that's an actual baby permit. That's not a pompon. You see his little orange fin? I'm pretty sure it's a baby permit. That's pretty sick. Awesome. Going back. You definitely got the bait. Definitely got the bait. Alright, we're not going to take that now. So I saw like two or three Maharas, those little guys that look like, uh, like they're little silver dollars. And I saw them shooting out and I just threw the net on them and I ended up with, I don't know, like a hundred pilchards, way more than we need. So we threw the rest back and we probably put in two, three dozen in the bucket um they're let me show you guys what they look like and the size these are on the small side these are good um these are good when you really can sight fish the fish but if you're these are not very hardy since they're so small they tend to die very easily i wanted them a little bit bigger we're looking for a little bit bigger baits but we might have to make do with these guys a friend right here what i told you about earlier so this right here is a glass nose and if you look at his nose it literally is a glass shaped um, it's very iridescent. It's kind of funny. It almost looks like a tumor. A very funny looking fish. They kind of have like a catfish mixed with a bluefish body. And if you look, this guy's got a bunch of whiskers too because they're feeling around in the sand. They're looking for sand fleas and crabs and stuff. And just a very funny looking fish. I mean, look at, if you look at them sideways like that, you see how much their mouth protrudes like that? Just like you guys saw in the Mahara video. These fish, they'll go in the surf and they're looking for sand fleas and crabs and all the other little shrimp and stuff hiding in seaweed and, and sand and they'll go out and they'll just suck them in. And they have a downward facing mouth because they're eating stuff on the bottom. And this guy's in inches of water, I mean right here on the beach. I'm gonna put this guy in, give him a little break, but I'll show you a smaller one. So one this size, this is the one we would use for, for snook bait when we're pitching baits off the beach, flatlining them. They're a little bit smaller because uh, we're gonna be using we're gonna be using smaller hooks. But this guy right here, this is a big boy bait right here. That's a big 40 inch plus snook bait right there. You drop this down at the pier, they, they usually get tight. So I got my pilchard out there, hooked through the nose. Little 1-0 circle hook, 20 pound fluoro. And you see there's a bird right there, it's just crashed on some bait. And that's exactly what you wanna look for. So I'm just gonna let my uh, pilchard I'm just gonna let him flatline, swim, do what he wants, and I think there's a houndfish about to be on it. Kinda looks like it. So we're gonna keep the smaller ones for snook bait. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in the bucket, but we're gonna let this bigger guy go. Because too, he's too big. Well, today did not go as planned. Um, it's low tide, so we did not account for that. And in this, this type of fishing, the whole surf snook fishing and trying to sight fish them and find packs of fish, it's very hard when it's low tide because number one, the fish tend to be out deeper so you can't see them. And number two is the fact that um, uh, at low tide you're going to have more waves breaking because the water is lower. So it's harder to see. You just have a bunch of whitewash like it is today. So if it was flat calm and there was no waves, we wouldn't have a problem. But the elements are definitely working against us today. So what I did is... Hopefully the audio is not too bad for you guys, but I went ahead and took the microphone off the GoPro, so now the GoPro is waterproof, but the audio is probably not going to be good. So it's going to be just like the mullet run, and I got the GoPro on top of my head, so you guys got that aerial view. So let's see if there's anything out here. So I just took my pilcher through the nose, and I'm just going to let it let him try to swim out as far as it can, and see what's out there. There we go. Something ate it. Something small. Really small. 
Probably one of those needlefish that I saw earlier. Oh no, it looks like blue runners. Honestly amazes me the difference in life between our beaches and the west coast because you guys have seen I've been on the west coast twice in the past month or so and it's just like I haven't seen a single snook here today and every single beach you go to on the west coast no matter whether it's Naples or Marco Island it seems like there's just so much life there and so much bait there's no bait on the beach here you know we had to go to one beach to net bait and bring it to another but it's just it's a it's funny to see the difference in between the beaches of the two coasts because our beaches honestly can be pretty damn lifeless sometimes aside from the mullet run and um, springtime and summertime is when they're supposed to be the most amount of bait on the beach but down here in South Florida there's been barely any pilchards or sardines on the beach down here. It's just every year is different and the fish follow the bait so if the bait aren't here the fish aren't either. You know the fish could be 50 miles up north, 20 miles up north, south. Those snook, tarp and everything, all that stuff moves. There we go, something ate it. I think it's the needlefish that got it. I'll let him eat it, yep. Feels like needlefish. You know what guys, it's funny because on a day like today where you kind of know that you're not gonna catch much, the conditions are bad, you don't have that good of bait, it's like you try that extra, you give that extra little bit to catch something as stupid as a needlefish or as stupid as a blue runner because you know at the end of the day everyone just wants to get tight and that's what it comes down to you know some days you just got to have fun make do with what you got and that's what I'm doing right now uh, I have a live wolf full of pilchards got nothing to do Sunday afternoon so I'm gonna fish them instead of complaining and talking about how the conditions aren't in my favor might as well catch something because that's what I came here to do Oh. Well, there was a needlefish. There we go. There we go. He's on it. I oh, he dropped it. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Oh, we got him. We got him. Oh, that's not a needlefish. That's probably a little jack. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What are you? What are you? It's a runner. calico crab and this guy I'm going to be doing a catch and cook with in the future for sure look at him look at how freaking this guy's relentless he wants that pilchard so bad he's not letting go he just keeps holding on to it he's basically only has the hook now Woo. man I've been catching a lot of these guys actually lately and uh, this is what we used to catch permit with and I'm going to be doing a catch and cook with this guy too in the future. Welcome to the end of the video guys and I'm sorry that it was not the most exciting thing to watch today but that's what I want to do differently about this channel as opposed to a lot of the other fishing channels. It's not just show you the successes, it's always the struggle and you know 
like the tactics that Brooke and I go about, the tactics that I go through, because what we were doing was the right thing. It's just we were working against the conditions presented to us. It was low tide, there was a lot of seaweed, um, there was not a lot of bait on the beach, so the snook were not there, but, you know, I worked hard to catch those two little blue runners. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I did. I waited way out there, and it was not, you know, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but I got big news. So if you come over here and check out the Mac, check this out, guys. LandSharkNation.com. I have the website up and running. It is nothing crazy yet. I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff to it, but as I've been saying a lot um, in the last two videos you guys saw, shirts are up for sale. So if you guys want to support this channel, if you guys want to have your badass t-shirt and make all your friends jealous because nobody else is going to have this t-shirt except our subscribers, the Landshark Nation, the greatest fishing family on the internet, <laughs> you guys can go ahead and check that out below. It will be on pre-order. <clears throat> now, I've been talking a lot about the pre-order lately, and the reason I went ahead and did the pre-order is because A, I don't want to have to buy a bunch of inventory and then not be able to sell it, and this way I don't sell out on anything. You guys get the size you want, the color you want, everyone is going to get what they want. The shirts are going to be on pre-order for two weeks. They will be on pre-order for, I think, the next 10 days. I'll let you guys know in, in the next coming videos. I'm really going to be pushing it, so sorry if I'm being too preachy. I just I want everyone to know about the shirts. So thank you guys for watching the video. And as always, stay salty. I got lots of content coming for you guys this Wednesday and Thursday of this week. I will be in the Keys fishing the bridges, so that's going to be exciting. So look forward to that. Until that next one.